So I heard this sound, and I want to play it for the audience. You got uh, Jeremy Lin, who has done a lot of bouncing around and did something in the NBA that I don't believe any of us have ever seen before or since, where over 14 games or something, he took over the league as an out-of-nowhere novelty phenomenon. He was on the back page of the New York tabloids and front page for, I think, 15 or 16 consecutive days. I, we have never seen anything like this until he then faced LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, and in front of all of us, forgot how to dribble. Like, they stole his soul because he came into that buzzsaw as the leader of a bad Knicks team where everyone had been injured, and he had to do that because there was no one else to do it, right? Carmelo was out, and then people started talking about uh, should Carmelo take a secondary role when he comes back to the great Jeremy Lin? Carmelo was out. Baron Davis was supposed to be the point guard for the Knicks that year, and he kept getting injured, and so Mike D'Antoni was forced to put in Jeremy Lin. I got to think it's one of, first of all, that will tell you that D'Antoni can do it with anybody. Like, in terms of making it, D'Antoni's system with anybody will make the point guard an MVP if he's Steve Nash <laughs> and Jeremy Lin for 14 days if he's not Steve Nash. And it'll make it James Harden when he was saying that James Harden could average 15 assists and James Harden's response was, Coach, be tripping. And sure enough, James Harden can do whatever he wants on the court. But here is Jeremy Lin uh, lamenting, really, what sounds like the end of a nine-year career. And in English, there's a saying, and it says, once you hit rock bottom, the only way is up. <laughs> but I, rock bottom just seems to keep getting more and more rock bottom for me. <sighs> and so free agency has been tough because I feel like in, in some ways the NBA has kind of given up on me. And I always knew if I gave anybody a reason to doubt, they would. Was he playing the piano while he was talking What's that way? Now? Was he doing that in a, a lounge at, uh, you know, like 10 p.m.? It's uh, the way the clip comes. I don't understand uh, if they added piano to make it sadder or if there was piano going on, but that clip comes courtesy of Good TV. Okay, so I want to hear that again, and I'm asking you guys how you feel about it because this is very hard. We've talked about this before. The idea of being stripped of your work identity in your late 20s or early 30s. The idea that you've worked for something all of your life. You've arrived at the mountaintop. Jeremy Lin, basically, right now, is the equivalent of being poor after you've been rich. He had those 14 days of rich <laughs> and has been bouncing around the league since. People need to understand this wasn't the biggest star in the NBA. He was the biggest star in sports, period, for, the, for 14 for, days. For 14 games, <laughs> yes, 14 days and nights, <laughs> and, and all the off time in between, he was the most amazing thing in the sport. Well, poor guy. He's got to retire in his 30s with $65 million. How will he do it? <laughs> he had the number for a year. He had the number two selling jersey in the NBA behind Derrick Rose. For a year. A year! Mike, play that sound again because uh, I know no one, no, much, no matter how much piano we put behind it, no one's going to actually feel bad for Jeremy Lin because, you know, you got Chris Cody ever helpful there just dropping a $65 million well, on Well, I it. mean, poor guy. If only there were a region of the world where he can just go in and do whatever he wants. Here's that clip again, courtesy of Good TV. And in English, there's a saying, and it says, once you hit rock bottom, the only way is up. <laughs> But I, rock bottom just seems to keep getting more and more rock bottom for me. <sighs> and so free agency has been tough because I feel like in, in some ways the NBA has kind of given up on me. And I always knew if I gave anybody a reason to doubt, they would. Tony, put it on the poll. Would you walk out of that lounge if that's what was playing on the piano? That clip is so much funnier to me if I'm imagining him playing the piano. Like it's got to be him. Yeah, it's got to be okay, him. Okay, let's do it that way. Let's Okay, let's set it up that way for the audience. I want you to imagine, okay? This is obviously a blues bar usually, but tonight they've got a piano player. 
and he's uh, he's getting started for the night. This he- is the lounge at your Royal Caribbean cruise. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is. Okay. It is the lounge where the pianist's dreams have gone to die. He imagined himself someone who would be famous as a pianist, but instead he is playing for nine people <laughs> at Howl at the Moon yeah. at 11 p.m. on a cruise ship. Headed to Nassau again. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere near Bermuda. <laughs> For the All right, time. so now imagine you're walking in. There's a drinking glass with one dollar bill in it. You are, you are that he put there because no to one entice is, others. Well, everyone's scared to get too close to the sadness, and so no one goes near the uh, the tip jar. And I want you to imagine Jeremy Lin is playing his own piano here. And in English, there's a saying, and it says, "Once you hit rock bottom, the only way is up." But I. Rock bottom just seems to keep getting more and more rock bottom for me. And so free agency has been tough because I feel like in in some ways the NBA has kind of given up on me. And I always knew if I gave anybody a reason to doubt, they would. Tony, put it on the poll. Would you stand outside of that lounge with a sandwich board that reads, don't go in there? (laughs) I don't know how he's going to be able to continue on. Perhaps maybe that Harvard degree he has to fall back on. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Man, look, you guys can How's make How's he going to bounce back? Okay, yeah. look, I understand exactly what it is you guys are saying, and it's certainly an easy thing to make fun of. $65 million, uh, he's educated, he could do whatever he wants. But I'm telling you in all seriousness that once you've dreamed about something, arrived at that dream, and then that dream is over quickly, it's not the easiest of rebounds. I mean, please, please, enough. Jeremy, you want some real fear? Try last week. Yeah. All right. Seriously? That's real fear. That's real fear. <laughs> Come on. Harvard out here can just stroll into any league in Asia and just be paid millions upon millions because of who you are. Mike, he here. doesn't have to work a single day for the remainder of his life if he doesn't want to. Come on. Well, you guys don't think he's faking the sadness, do you? No, I think he's oh. genuinely sad. But here, uh, Jeremy, I'm here to offer perspective. You're doing all right, yeah. pal. Yep. It's all going to work out for Jeremy Lin. I know in this moment you're upset that your world champion Toronto Raptors that just gave you an NBA championship ring don't want to bring you back. Trust me, there is light at the end of this tunnel, Jeremy. When you set out on the journey of life, Dan, and if I tell you at a very young age, by the time you're 30, you will have graduated from Harvard and made $65 million and at a 14-day period where you were the most famous athlete in the world. Who wouldn't take that? Um, people with bigger dreams than that. I mean, uh, you can't tell bigger me. Bigger dreams? Bigger. <laughs> How much bigger, Jeremy? Let's be realistic. You had two SI covers. You can't tell me that you're listening to that and that he sounds satisfied with what it is that you're saying. You he can't... just won a title. He I mean, just won didn't, one. Didn't he play 51 seconds? He just won a title. Ring's a ring, Dan. Yeah, we react totally different to that sound. I literally heard that yesterday, and I was like, oh, I'm putting that on funniest thing from the sports weekend list. Um, and you would be in the majority on that. Most people listening to that won't feel bad at all for Jeremy Lin. And I got sucked into the temptation of mocking him, too. We did a full three minutes on that sad lounge. Like, what do you want to name it? What is the name of that lounge? You guys I want don't know. To- I just know that I was at that lounge a couple times with the one time I went on a cruise. <laughs> trying to drink the, the tip glass. It is absolutely easy to make fun of him, but my guess is that he doesn't find much of this funny right now, that he doesn't have the perspective to find any of it funny right now. I know now. he's in it right now, man. He's allowed to be in it, and that sad music isn't making anything better. Jesus. I've confirmed he played uh, one minute in the NBA Finals. I don't. I think they're rounding up there. I think it's only because you can't say 51 seconds. 